when the covid happened you know it was uh, kind of a situation where none of the industry was ready for it and uh, everybody was supposed to work from home and uh, what happened was that we never tested the business continuity plan to this scale we were ne never ready for the transition and run from home uh, the way we do you know the bigger challenge what we faced was the third party suppliers who were there your employee attendance your daily work from home uh, atmosphere which was uh, required to be created uh, there were inadequate controls for you know uh, for uh, people who are going to be working from home and there were the challenges of information leak and the data protection so you know uh, those were the challenges and at a strategic level when we say uh, what is required to be done was uh, we have to have the business continuity plan to test it now whatever it had the risk management plan was to be tested and we have tested it i think most of the companies are trying to do that your disaster recovery plan was also you know uh, required to be put in place uh, when the covid came in your instant uh, instance uh, response plan and your cyber resilience so strategically uh, you had to align all these plans of your company right to people who are working from home the healthcare has emerged one of the major you know consumer of the it and the cyber security per se and it's a new it sector in times to come while everybody is testing their uh, you know uh, coronavirus uh, kits their uh, solutions their vaccines the hackers are trying to hack into it right and those healthcare sectors are to be protected the manufacturing plants need to be protected right which we never thought of it earlier the hospital itself and there was a case uh, case in point in march where one of the hospitals in check the public was being you know uh, ransomware uh, by the hackers for a ransom and they had to stop all the surgeries in that hospital of course uh, banking uh, another is one sector has been always a challenge uh, whether it's a covid or not covid and and uh, while it's a covid it, it's become much more you know uh, aggressive and there are some kind of a anti malwares which are there uh, uh, to name few is emote and the locky bot which have become very active you know uh, these are the kind of malwares which are more targeted towards the financial sector and these are we are seeing the traces of these uh, malwares now very actively and to tell you more uh, all the all the all the threats or the attacks which are happening they are shifting as the antivirus is changing the place around the world so uh, when the uh, the uh, so the coronavirus was in uh, italy all the attacks were concentrated towards a particular you know thing. when it moved to us the themes changed when it is in india the themes changed so so uh, the hackers are very smart what they're doing today right and then is a manufacturing and the manufacturing was the all the manufacturing uh, plants especially the ot uh, plants which are there you know uh, the ot security is a bigger challenge for everyone today right uh, we are not able to monitor your manufacturing plants while sitting at home right the ot security or the or, or the or the plant security is now at the forefront email is uh, the most common method which is being used by the hackers uh, to don't give the payloads on to the people and what we saw the phishing emails increased almost 600% in this last couple of months and all these phishing attacks which were there on the email they were having a specific theme they were uh, for the scamming they were for the brand impersonation they were for the business email compromises okay and they had multiple attachments and if for example if a mail comes to anyone saying that this is from who and with the attachment of do's and don'ts of the corona virus you definitely will download okay and that's where the uh, the problem starts okay and something more what happened is there were more than 1 lakh uh, email uh, the 1 lakh domains which came up web domains which were of the malicious nature not all of them but a lot of them were malicious nature so what do you need to do practically you need to have your endpoint security which is very strong 
have a DLP solutions for your endpoints, have the web filtering that can block the malicious websites, right? Have the endpoint softwares that can spot the malicious files, right? And you can have a very strong spam filter in your emails. And what else you can do is, you know, have a multi-factor authentication uh, and also a very secured uh, password policy, right? And which you change very regularly. So don't have a password which is commonly, you know, uh, known to everyone or it can be common, uh, easily broken. So have a password which is almost 12 character length with a combination of alphanumeric. Practically what has happened is uh, when you talk of the short term, medium term and the long term for any uh, cybersecurity company, they have to really think of how they want to go about it, right? Uh, when they were being told to shift from the on-prem uh, prem to the work from home culture, uh, it was a big problem. So they didn't have the VPNs, adequate number of VPNs. So they should go in for adequate number of VPNs because people are still going to work from home, right? Uh, security patch distribution is another factor which uh, is to be taken into account, but uh, you know, people, the companies have to really look in for it. It's the best time for the small enterprises to move from the on-prem, you know, uh, IT infrastructure to the cloud infrastructure, right? And uh, you know, do a lot of IT uh, load which is there, and that can be easily managed, right? And when you talk of a strong email system, so they can always, you know, move on to Office 365 with multi-factor authentication, right? Something which they have to now plan for a short term and a medium term is that if they are running a SOC and a NOC, think that if the staff of the NOC or SOC gets you know, uh, infected by COVID, how do they handle that? So they should make those two teams or three teams, whatever they have, you know, and accordingly work in the NOC and SOC. Because if single team you know, gets affected, the other team still is going to be there. Similarly, they should go in for an MDM because now the, the major challenge what we are going to do uh, face is that uh, this kind of situation is going to exist. Your work from home is going to be there. You're going to work with your third party suppliers, your own uh, contractors, your consultants, your onboard people who are going to be there. So have a mobile device management, right? And that will you know, uh, help everyone to uh, or the, each of the company to ensure that the devices which are BYOD are taken care of and there's no data leakage which takes place. One of the major things which I would tell you is that to safeguard your data, your company data. And you can safeguard your company data by multi-factor authentication, maybe SMS based, or maybe uh, with other over the app uh, authentication, have a patch management for the remote access services, and have a very robust VPN while you're working. Have a DLP solution and, uh, and uh, uh, control all the browsers of your endpoints, of your users who are going to be doing it and ensure that the operating systems, email clients and the softwares are updated automatically, right? And uh, not last but the least is ensure that no data of yours gets leaked or hacked by the hacker. I'll be talk of the VARA and how we are trying to overcome, overcome the current situation. Uh, like I told you that uh, we already tested our business continuity plan uh, while we were moving from uh, the, uh, the industries, from the infrastructure to the work from uh, home culture, we were able to check our business continuity plan. So, so we moved from the offices in a very graduated manner. We shifted all the people from desk to desk, desk to desk to, uh, you know, uh, floor to floor, and then we are able to manage all those things. Secondly, what we did was that the risk management, we took care of that. And that is how we, uh, when we were graduating from our uh, on-prem situation to the work from home, we did it in a very gradual manner. We really tested our incident response plans, uh, cyber resilience plan what was very important in case of any cyber attack and uh, while we talk of this we implemented 
a different kind of you know tools for people who are working from home so that we are able to safeguard the data we are able to safeguard the networks and we are able to safeguard our infrastructure for any of the cyber attacks and today we uh, you know we are happy to say that we are very comfortable you know even while we are working from home darknet forms 96% of the internet what you are seeing today and the internet what you see today is just 4% that comprises of the google bing yahoo and you know other sites what you see to you know find out uh, the information and the remaining part of the internet which you never see is a darknet and uh, doing the cyber forensics in the darknet is always very challenging because uh, number one uh, you are not able to identify who the criminals are and where are they operating from because they have already masked uh, masked their you know identities altogether and uh, to get into a darknet to find uh, a particular criminal it takes long time and perseverance by law enforcement agencies however there are a lot of tools which actually you know scrap through the darknet uh, and we are able to you know do a lot of information gathering in the darknet it really works very differently from your normal internet and uh, uh, while you in the darknet uh you can do anything which you like but it's mostly infested by all the terrorists all the criminals all the isis and all the all the people who have nefarious you know background and of course the hackers so that is the darknet all about and and uh, when we talk of the cryptocurrency the cryptocurrency is primarily the uh, the tool or the uh, the media or the currency which is used in darknet for all the transactions so if you have to buy a weapon or a drug okay or hire a hitman you use the cryptocurrency okay to uh, pay that particular hacker or the criminal who are there and the cryptocurrency forensics to give you a perspective about it like crypto uh, cryptocurrency itself is a pseudo anonymous that means it is not anonymous but it's pseudo anonymous there are tools by which you can really find the traces of the crypto transactions where where, where they happened from block to block and you can pinpoint a particular ip address where the your final you know uh, crypto went right so those are the kind of tools which are available today uh, to do the cryptocurrency forensics when you have the it network and when you have the ot network to give you a kind of insight into both the it endpoints they communicate right they are into the short and a frequent conversations with many of the connections so they they are communicating with each other and the nature of communication is very open and almost anyone can speak to anyone else that means uh, they can send emails or browsing or access the data or you know uh, they they can control the application this is what it is in the it network whereas in the ot the typical endpoint communication is point to point okay and they have a scada master and they have a scada slave and it uses a kind of a protocols which are called multicast and broadcast mode right and uh, they could use tcp or udp or neither of them so practically the ot security today has become a bigger challenge right and uh, uh, the data access between the it and the ot right is very complicated and complex so practically uh you know it's a hackers paradise if they try to get into uh, the uh, ot network and once they get into it you know they can cause any damage and to give you example of all the ot networks is you know your manufacturing plants your uh, kind of uh, healthcare uh, plant which is there or your critical information infrastructure so those are the kind of you know uh, networks which once hacked into can be a big problem 
so you need to have a very robust security which bridge it and the ot okay so that you know uh, as and when there is a data exchange or there is an input or the output which happens right it has been taken care of and when you talk of uh, the covid has hampered us uh, yes the business has slowed down uh, we are all uh, you know all the all the industries per se uh, where you are, had orders in hand they are slowing down uh, they have shifted the investments which were happening you know to next quarter or may probably to next to next quarters so uh, the services part still continues where we are providing all the services the new business is really taking time to come in and we have to really go back to our drawing boards to strategize again to get into the business and this is a, uh, the case in point with every industry every company uh, where each one of us today is you know facing the slowdown for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel